Hello again everyone from Tokyo, Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera where today I'm going to be doing just as it says in the title of the video I'm going to be reviewing the rarest camera which Olympus ever sold and this particular camera is the Olympus Wide S of 1957 in the black paint finish now a few days ago I did a video about the black paint Canon P which is probably the rarest of the uh, Canon uh, rangefinder cameras or, uh, or Canon cameras period and I was quite happy with that camera and uh, I enjoyed doing the review and just the, the same day that I posted that video I acquired this camera later on the same day and I was quite shocked to, to find it uh, come up on the market and even more surprised that I was able to uh, get it or what the, that, that word which rich people like, uh, acquire. Like, rich people don't buy things, they acquire things. To say that I acquired this camera here and it arrived in the mail last night and uh, I'm incredibly happy with it. So how rare is the Olympus Wide S? Uh, in 15 years, this is only the second example which I have seen and I happen to have owned both examples. Uh, the first one I got not long after I arrived here in Japan and it was a rather beat up camera with a lot of the chrome worn off and a pretty good dent on it, but it had a really good lens. And I had that camera for a number of years and I ended up selling it to a collector and I thought, well, maybe one of these days I'll get another one which I can go out and shoot with. And uh, what, uh, six or seven years later, I come across this one. Uh, they're extremely uncommon. Uh, Olympus produced a number of black paint cameras uh, over the years and a few of them they produced in the 1950s. Uh, the most common one was the Olympus Pin W and any of you who know uh, photography out there will know that the Olympus Pin W is not the common camera. It's really hard to find and very expensive. Uh, that was the most common. Uh, the, second, uh, uh, the second hardest to find would be the Olympus Pin S with the standard lens in black paint and uh, about one third of, of as many of those cameras were produced as the Olympus Pin W. So they're really, really rare. And as for the wide S, as I said, this is only the second one which I've seen in the last 15 years. And it makes it extremely uncommon. Uh, if you do a search on the internet and for these cameras, you'll probably see a few of them there. Uh, a lot of them are not original. Uh, not that people were trying to fake these cameras. Most people don't even know that there is a such thing as a black paint wide S, uh, you know, uh, other than a few collectors. And you know, the people who've repainted these cameras are not repainting them to try to increase the value to sell them to collectors. They're just painting them because they want a black uh, wide S. And a lot of these cameras were repainted back in the day when you know you, you couldn't easily buy a black paint camera and. There was a time uh, among photography, photography and photographers that the black camera was considered the professional model. Uh, if you look at the first Yashica Electro 35, which came in a black paint finish, it was called the professional. And uh, other, uh, I guess, uh, sales brochures and things at the time would, you know, would usually say that also available in a professional black finish. So some people simply just painted them black because it made the camera lower profile and uh, you know, and they couldn't find an original black one, which was, which is obvious in this case since they made almost none of them. Uh, but there is an easy way, there are a couple easy ways to tell an original black Olympus wide S from one which has been repainted. The most first obvious way is the chrome lever and chrome rewind knob. Uh, Olympus, for whatever reason, didn't paint these black. They just used the standard parts off the regular wide S and they also used the chrome uh, shoe on the top here. Uh, that's kind of an odd thing, but that's just what they did. Maybe, you know, they, they, these are, these are done in kind of the semi matte chrome finish, which is really hard to get paint to stick to. So, uh, they just left it alone. Another, uh, dead giveaway, uh, of a fake one would be a chrome, uh, focusing ring. Uh, though Olympus didn't paint the rewind knob and charging lever, they did paint the focusing ring and they put on a black focusing tab. So as long as you, this is black and these are silver, uh, you, you most likely uh, have an original camera. Uh, it's a really beautiful camera, very high quality paint, not as glossy as the paint which comes on uh, the, the, the Canon P that I reviewed the other day, but still a beautiful camera. And I'm really happy to have this. Now that I've uh, gotten over talking about the 
blackness of this camera, I'll go ahead and do a general review of the Olympus Wide S because uh, some of you are probably interested. You may have an original uh, Wide S in the chrome finish, which looks like this one here. So I'll go ahead and just give you a quick review of the features, controls, functions, and a little bit about the history of the camera. Uh, starting with the history, this camera was released in 1957 and the Olympus released this version with the uh, uh, wide angle lens as kind of a way to preempt Leica who at the time were getting ready to introduce their new uh, 35mm f2 Summicron lens. And the, the golden part of the wide S, the, the reason to get one of these cameras is this wonderful 35mm f2 H Zuiko lens, which is the most sophisticated 35mm lens which Olympus produced and capable of producing the highest uh, quality images. Uh, the other famous lens which they produced in this focal length was the 35-2, which was available in the OM amount. And that's a very good lens, and it's highly regarded, and it's rather expensive nowadays, though not as expensive as the more exotic of the OM lenses, but that is not as good as the lens which came in this camera. This is a superb lens, and that's one of the reasons why the value of this camera has always been very high here in Japan. Uh, it's, these cameras are not sought after by collectors in Japan, they are sought after by photographers who really love this lens. And uh, even when I first came here, when the cameras were more reasonably priced, these were expensive and they just continue to get more and more expensive as time goes by. So let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, features, controls and functions and how to operate the camera. We'll go ahead and start with the rewind knob here, which is kind of the pop out thing which Olympus used in their wide S cameras and also the 35S. This was an innovative feature in those days when most cameras still had a rewind knob. The lever allowed you to rewind the film more easily. Uh, over here we have this, uh, this shoe for the uh, flash and if you're using a flash you have a, a flash sync socket on the bottom. There's access to the vertical adjustment on the rangefinder by removing this screw and sliding off the shoe. Uh, make sure not to lose the screw, it's easy to lose. This is the shutter release button which accepts a standard cable release. Over here we have the film winding and shutter charging lever. And this has one of the smoothest winding actions of any camera I have ever tried. I was comparing this last night next to uh, a Leica M6 and a Nikon SP and this camera is actually better than either of those. So the Leica was really really close. It, it, it makes this kind of smooth ratcheting sound which the Leica doesn't make but it just, it just feels wonderful and it's very easy. Uh, this camera does have an advantage over the Nikon SP and the Leica M6 and that is that it has a leaf shutter built in the lens rather than the focal plane shutter which means the camera vibrates less when you are shooting it. Moving to the back of the camera, we have a viewfinder window. Uh, this camera comes with a really nice, sophisticated and bright viewfinder with projected frame lines. Olympus really got this right in the late 1950s, not only in their rangefinder cameras, but also their uh, scale focus cameras like the Pin S. Uh, they, they designed a very simple and elegant system for the viewfinders using a combination of lenses and mirrors. This was a relatively inexpensive way to make the viewfinder, and uh, it might, while it might not have been quite the same quality level as using solid prisms of glass, it has the advantage of being user serviceable and easy to clean. So I, I really like the viewfinder system. Here is a really cool thing, and what I really like about this camera, as well as the 35S, is this light value computer on the back, which is a mechanical computer you can use to uh, make your uh, exposure uh, settings for the camera. You simply turn the dial in the middle to uh, line up the film speed to match the film you have loaded in the camera and you'll use the visual uh, code, uh, I guess visual cues and uh, the combination of shutter and aperture or light value to come up with the settings to program into the lens. It's a very cool system, it's very easy to use and what it allows you to get an understanding of uh, the, the system used to make exposures which even today uh, in the digital age is still the same as what uh, we used in film photography or what they used in film photography back in the 1950s. It's a really good and simple system. Uh, moving to the bottom here we have a standard quarter inch tripod socket. Here we have the release button for uh, the film winding mechanism so you can rewind the film. Uh, on the front of the camera we have the viewfinder window. We have this matte, this matte glass over the uh, mask for the projected frame lines. And we also have the rangefinder window. Uh, we have the focusing tab and focusing ring, which is arranged in meters. 
and we have in front of that the depth of field scale which will show you how much depth of field you have at any given aperture and in the middle here right on the uh, focusing line is a small window which is the shutter charge indicator now if I charge the shutter this will turn red and when I fire the shutter it will turn clear it's a really useful feature and quite a wonderful thing this is really high tech in 1957 in front of that we have the shutter speed ring and we have a full range of speeds from bulb and one second all the way up to one five hundredth of a second there's an extra step for the one five hundredth uh, uh, shutter speed uh, that's normal because there's an extra spring required to get that higher uh, speed uh, this camera it's not so difficult to turn it to the one five hundred speed uh, other versions it's sometimes more difficult uh, it just depends on the camera you have in front of that we have this moving window and as the window moves across you can see the EV numbers or light value numbers underneath and you would simply use the computer on the back to come up with the appropriate uh, uh, light value and then you would turn either uh, either dial the aperture or shutter speed dial until you got the, the correct light value for the the light you have you know in, in your scene and cool thing about this camera is it doesn't have the uh, crazy uh, EV computer or interlock system on it which kind of locks the rings together and you have to push or pull or squeeze or whatever it is to get them to move, work independently here they are not locked together to, to get them to if you want to use the same EV number with a different combination of uh, shutter speed and aperture you simply turn the two rings together like that it's a very simple foolproof system if you want more depth of field simply turn it this way to a larger aperture and a faster shutter speed excuse me less depth of field I get backwards some Sometimes. This also freezes action more, but uh, you have to be more careful with the focus. And as you turn the other way, this slows down the shutter speed, uh, but closes down the aperture and increases the depth of field, which gives you uh, uh, sharper, you know, sharper images when you're shooting you know, landscapes or things like that. But you have to be careful for you know, things like moving leaves on windy days or, or people running around. Uh, what I generally do is I tend to shoot most, of, I, try, I try to focus around f8 and uh, that tends to get the best uh, performance out of most lenses and if I want a really uh, shallow depth of field for something close up you know like flowers or things like that of course I can uh, open up the lens and if I'm doing uh, say a landscape or something uh, and I, I want you know a long exposure for a really good uh, accurate uh, you know, ac you know say improved accuracy I'll go ahead and stop down the lens and use a shutter lo lower shutter speed and I'll mount the camera to a tripod uh, very simple system and very much like uh, yeah, what you use on pretty much other any other camera except with the addition of this really clever system which I really like. Wonderful thing about this camera is it came with the original black uh, lens cap which is um, uh, the camera itself is hard to find to find the original lens cap is just like icing on the cake. But anyway uh, I'm, I'm getting uh, kind of low on the battery here so I'm going to go ahead and stop the uh, video before uh, the battery runs out. Uh, I don't think I'll be listing this camera for sale. Uh, I might, you know, if someone is really interested in it, go ahead and send me a message. And uh, if you're really interested, maybe I can work something out with you. But otherwise, I plan to uh, probably keep this one for myself because uh, I may never find another one. And uh, but I do have uh, uh, this other 35s, which is for sale in my Etsy store right now. Uh, this camera is not as cosmetically nice uh, as many of them are, but this one has a really outstanding and clean lens on it. So someone who might be interested in trying out the Olympus version of the 35mm Somicron, uh, this would be a good camera for you. Uh, I plan to be making uh, more videos over the next uh, week or so. If you'd like to see these, uh, please subscribe. I'm always trying to get more people interested in vintage cameras and photography, so uh, it would help if you click the like button. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you tune in again soon.